Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining me at Web Summit. Over the next 15 minutes, I'm just going to take you through Heineken's journey, a journey we're still going on, to become a mobile-first marketer. Now, as many of you know, you know our brands, are familiar with many of our brands from around the world. Our brands have been built and have grown through the power of great creative, but creative that's been built to live in television and benefit from the sight, sound, and motion, immediacy, and massive reach that television brings. Now, we're going to start off with two facts. One, of course, many of you are familiar with, this is not going to be new information, but television today is a little less effective than it was yesterday. And this has been a trend that's been continuing for roughly 15 years. More advanced in some markets, developing in other markets, but more and more television is fading as a powerful vehicle for growing brands around the world. And we have a tremendous amount of research that shows this. I'm just going to highlight some in the US where this is one of the more advanced markets in the decline of television. What you're seeing here in this slide is essentially a comparison of TV ratings from today's top shows in the United States to shows 22 years ago, 1994, 1995. And what you're seeing is that the top shows today in the United States have a rating that's less than one third of the top shows 22 years ago. So the mass reach that television brought is not there anymore. And it's really driven by the fact that people are watching less television. So the hours people consume television over the course of the month are down double digits for most major demos. If you're under the age of 34, you're watching significantly less television than you used to. Even 49 to 35, you're watching 14% 14 less, 14 less television over the last five years. That's pretty significant. The second major fact here is that consumers are in control of what they consume, how they consume it, and they're also consuming much faster. There's a lot of research to bear this out, and I'm going to show you research specifically that MIT has been doing over the past 15 years. If you ask people how long it takes for you to consume and create a thought, consume information and create a thought, most people say it's about a second. And going back in 2001, MIT says that it actually takes roughly 0.3 seconds. So over the course of a second, you can process three thoughts. They've continued to do this research over the past 15 years, and most recently, they've said that the time it takes for someone to process a thought has gone down to 0.03 seconds. So people are generating thoughts 10 times faster than they did roughly 15 years ago. Now, if you're processing an image, that's even faster. You can process an image in, in, it's in an even shorter amount of time. It goes down to 0 .1, 0 0.013, so even a fraction of what you're seeing there. So it, thought, you're processing information much faster than you used to. And you're making decisions a lot faster than you used to. And the reason for that is because they believe that you're now more in control of what you see, what you want to digest, what you want to focus on, and then generate thoughts in a much faster pattern. And this is being defined, really, by your mobile phone. And that passion point around your mobile phone allows you to be in control of what you want, to receive content immediately, to receive responses immediately, and engage and have utility the mobile phone has completely not only changed how you work, but it's changing how you think and how consumers interact with brands. Those two facts have made marketing significantly different than it used to be. All right, an example, a couple of facts. The average consumer scrolls through 100 meters of content through feed on a daily basis. That's the height of the Empire State Building. Right, so that's a tremendous amount of content that you're scrolling through over the course of a day. And you're basically choosing what to absorb, what not to absorb, what to react to, and what to completely go past. Content, because of that, has become smaller, more bite-sized. People are looking at things much quicker, choosing what to watch, what not to, and they're digesting it and they're moving on. How you consume in a mobile device is very different than how you consume on television or in a movie theater or on radio. 
It's more bite-sized, it's faster, there's a lot more there, and you're just choosing what to absorb and what not to, and you're going past it. So in today's world, as a marketer, you cannot lead with television. Television's still gonna be there, it's still a part of our marketing mix, we're still investing in television, and we probably still will in the future, but if you're leading your ideas and you're leading your thought process with television, you're gonna have a hard time retrofitting it for mobile because it's a different way of consuming. I'm gonna give you an example now of what we have been doing in the past was taking some of our TV content, our video content, and just paste, placing it in one of the key mobile apps like Facebook. What you see here is right. essentially you have a 90 second video in Facebook feed here you have a UCL ad starring Mourinho. Now, with sound off on Facebook, horizontal video that doesn't fill the screen, you're really not gonna dive into that video and pay attention to it. Television content, unfortunately, doesn't work in a mobile feed. People don't stick with it. They, within two seconds, they're gone. So the amount of people that consumed more than two seconds of that video on Facebook was very, very small. In order to make your content fit for mobile, there are four key principles that we try and adhere to and try and make sure our brands understand and make sure our agencies understand. Number one, are you grabbing attention within the first second? Maybe the first two seconds. But, out of home, but, but digital and mobile is the new out of home. You have to stop the scroll immediately. Number two, are you able to communicate without sound? Because some of these platforms, the sound is off. All of social media, when you get a video, the sound is off at start. It's initiated with sound off. And you have to initiate the sound. You have to be able to communicate without sound, at the very least at the start. Number three, are you filling the screen? Because if you're putting a horizontal ad while people are scrolling through content vertically, they're not gonna stop, and it makes things harder to see. You wanna fill the screen, at least go to a one-by-one -one ratio, or if you can expand it and go to full screen, that's what you should do. And finally, you wanna keep, keep their attention. You wanna keep them absorbed in the content, and if you have to make the video shorter and more bite-sized, that's what you need to do to keep them to the end. Facebook videos should be shorter than YouTube, and they should be shorter than television, because people absorb shorter content. And you have to match where your content and is in whatever platform it's being viewed in. Now I'm gonna show you some of our more recent content that has been built for mobile feed. Now what you see here, there we go. That's not an issue, there we go. But you're basically seeing content that's built, it's built to screen. It's vertical, it fills the screen, it starts with the sound off, but you're still able to understand the story, you're still able to engage. We use a celebrity to stop and grab attention immediately and keep people engaged. If, if a platform has different functionality to it, like Facebook, you have two, two videos running simultaneously within the ad, it, allows, it adds interest, it allows you to tell the story quicker or in different ways, so you should leverage that, leverage that as well. And even if you don't go to full screen and you just use a one-by-one -one ratio, you take a greater advantage of the screen, you tell the story in a shorter amount of time, and you still can get your point across. To that point, we were able to get 25% completion rates of each of these videos, which is exponentially higher than the average on Facebook. And I'm not saying that the creative is necessarily amazing. Let's take that and put it on the side. Just by using the brilliant basics, we believe you get more people to interact with the content, engage with the content, and stay with it. And that's the key. You just have to adopt the brilliant basics to become better at building content for mobile. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take you through a lot of the content that we built and focused on over the last six months. Um, I don't have enough time to show you everything, so I built a quick video, and we'll show you a lot of what's coming and what's happening now with Heineken. Yeah, okay. All right, great, so like...
Hopefully you guys like that. <laughs> Mobile is really the new out of home. For brands and for agencies, this is a tremendous challenge because you, have to, you don't have time to build a story. You don't have time to tease and get people into a story with a dramatic ending or a big reveal. Unfortunately, you have to come out full force at the start, and you literally have to use a, an image or just an icon to grab people, bring them in, and have them react, have a thought, and have an emotional change. That makes things much harder for brands, and it makes things much harder for agencies. But if you don't build with that in mind, you'll never succeed at the end, and that's the key thing with mobile. Now, one thing I haven't spoken about is utility. The power of mobile is really, it becomes the remote control of people's lives, right? And you have, I have examples of other brands here like Domino's, Order App, cosmetic companies are great at this, at showing what their brands and their different um, iterations can do through a mobile device and how you may appeal to different colors and things in terms of using applying makeup. As a beer marketer, it's, this is a little bit harder for us, but I think we're getting better at this as well. We, more and more, you need to be able to bring utility to consumers and provide service that brings them closer to the brands. Whether it's Beer is Good or Beer to Hoot in the Netherlands, where we have a loyalty app, whether it's the Heineken Experience app, which brings the history and heritage of our brand and brings it closer to consumers, whether it's de home delivery apps that we partner with, like Rappi or Drizzly in the Americas or in the United States, or our own uh, offshoot uh, beer delivery system, B Beer Wolf, which is home delivery of craft beers in parts of Europe. Now, our ambition at Heineken, as I think I said at the beginning, is to become the benchmark for a creativity in a mobile first world. We're only part of the way through our journey, but hopefully you can see we're making progress. Four things that I want to leave you with and things that you should be considering. First, number one, start with a mobile first mindset because you won't get to mobile first unless you have that in mind at the start. Number two, you need to collaborate. Make sure your agencies understand this. Bring the digital and mobile platforms closer to your creative work and closer to your, to your brand teams so that they can benefit from their learning. You want to be able to execute at a low, at the, at the very low, at a very granular level on a platform level. So if you create assets for YouTube, those will not work on Snapchat. Those will not work on Instagram or Twitter. You need to create content for the platform in mind. And finally, that doesn't erase the fact that we always start with a big idea. The way you do marketing in that sense has not changed. You want to start with the brand and the big idea, but you have to execute it for, the, for mobile platforms on a very granular level. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.